Welcome everyone. Our webinar today is about beam connections in Axis VM. The webinar consists of two main parts. First, we will have a look at the theoretical background of building information modeling and what opportunities Axis VM offers to us. In the second section, we will see some practical examples of beam-based data exchange between applications. After the presentation, we will have time for questions and answers, of course. So let's start with the theoretical background. Because our time is limited now, we will try to give only a brief overview of the topic. What is BIM actually? It is an acronym for Building Information Modeling. It is a process supported by various tools, technologies and contracts involving generation and management of digital representations of physical and functional characteristics of places. The main goal of BIM is to create an information pipeline between the participants of the design, construction and operation process, which should be based on a centralized model, be as free of user interaction as possible, be robust and hold all information anyone may need. The history of BIM goes back to pretty early years. It always seemed wise to hold all building related information at one place, which could serve every participant. But it was not until the 90s that we had the required IT background and computational capacity to handle the vast amount of data. Then several proprietary file formats and ideas were born, such as Graphisoft's virtual building model, Bentley's integrated project model, or Autodesk's or Vectorworks building information modeling. There wasn't even a name to call this newborn child. The name Building Information Modeling was first written to paper in 2002 and the standardization continued under this term. After this first chaotic period, the need for a neutral file format emerged. The first standard was CIS2 to handle structural cross-section project information. Then Building Smart developed IFC, which soon became ISO standard of BIM. The latest platform for BIM is SAF and it has been developed since 2018. So let's have a look at the two main branches of BIM. We know open and closed or lonely BIM. Open BIM is based on open standards such as IFC. It does not determine any specific software to use. Any participant can use whatever applications they prefer. On the other hand, closed BIM requires all vital stakeholders to use some software platform through the whole process or at least something that, that can communicate with products of that platform. It uses proprietary file formats. What do we see when we compare them? Well, of course, it is not only black and white. We cannot claim that one is definitely better than the other. OpenBeam supports a transparent, open workflow, allowing project members to participate regardless of the software tools they use, avoids multiple, in multiple input of the same data, enables small and large software vendors to participate and compete on system independent solutions and this is a one tool for all solution. Each member of the process can find what they are interested in via easy and customizable queries. However, Closebeam can handle special requirements more easily. Results in smaller file sizes which yields faster import or export and data safety is significantly better this way. It is up to you and that specific project you are in which one to use. Now let us go a bit closer to Axis VM and what it can offer in terms of BIM. For Open BIM we have IFC and SAF interfaces while for Closed BIM we support data exchange with Revit, Tecla and AutoCAD. A few words about IFC now. It is one of our oldest BIM interface. We support a wide range of IFC formats up to IFC 4. This is a human readable format, so if you are bold enough to open it in a text editor or a raw IFC viewer, you may as well edit it. IFC files are basically a group of entities grouped together in tree-like structures. In a tree, entities are in relation with each other. IFC divides all entities into rooted and non-rooted entities. Rooted entities derive from IFC root and have a concept of identity, they have a GUID, along with attributes for name, description and revision control. 
non-rooted entities do not have identity and instances only exist if referenced from a rooted instance directly or indirectly. IFC root is subdivided into three abstract concepts, object definitions, relationships and property sets. IFC object definition captures tangible object occurrences and types, like a wall, for example. IFC relationship captures relationships among objects, like an object or like an opening item assigned to a wall. IFC property definition captures dynamically extensible properties about objects, like a wall is fire resistant or not, load bearing or not, and so on. From our point of view, IFC product and its successors are of utmost importance. All kind of elements which we can import or export are somehow described as a successor of IFC product. Let's have a look at how walls are represented in IFC. You can see that it is a rooted object, it is a subclass of IFC root, then it also inherits from IFC product. There are several other types in the middle while we arrive at IFC wall standard case entity, which is exactly the ones we process in case of import and what we emit in case of export. Have a look at this picture cited here from the IFC website. This is a three-dimensional image of a wall with some explanation of some of its properties. Now on the left side, you can see the inheritance graph of a wall entity. The inverse properties have been dimmed out because they are not relevant now. When we import an IFC file, we read what is on the right side. I connected the matching properties. So, we have some information for its history marked in pink, then its location in global space highlighted in grayish green, then its geometrical representation marked with green. Based on this, we can get the proper raw geometry of the wall. But how do we know what it is made of? This is when the formerly mentioned IFC relationship type entities comes to our help. In this case, it is an IFC real associates material type, which injects material related data to our raw geometry. And from now, we know that this certain wall is made of concrete. Easy, isn't it? Well, there are a few difficulties though. We must talk about IFC representations and what they do. IFC products can be geometrically represented in a myriad of ways. These are referred to as shape representations, although there are clear developers' agreements on when to use which, in practice, this is not always respected. Just to pick a few. Body indicates a three-dimensional shape which may be represented by BREP, NURPS, Constructive Solid Geometry or CSG, or Swept Solid. It may be defined directly or derived by applying material definitions to other representations. Axis indicates a path for linear elements for which material profiles or layers are aligned. Footprint indicates a boundary for planar elements, slabs or staircases for example, for which, for which material layers are bounded. Profile indicates a side profile for opening elements, for doors or windows, for example, for which material constituents are bounded. These are usually provided in some kind of local coordinate system. Several software products offer the chance to decide about the way it represents solids in the exported IFC file. For the file to be as efficient to import as possible, it is vital to choose wisely. If you have a look at this picture, you will see three distinct ways of representing the very same wall with, the, with an opening. The first method uses the boundaries, the faces of a solid. They are planar polygons, rectangulars, triangles. Actually, any planar shape can happen here. Then we have the second solution, which simply gives a planar polygon with a hole, assigns thickness, and that's all. The third candidate uses constructive solid geometry and three-dimensional Boolean operations. It has a green rectangle-based prism from what the brown prism is subtracted and the resulting solid will be the wall we wish to show. So which one is best? The first and last requires huge amount of calculation, hence very error-prone and sometimes lead to dead ends when trying to find the analytical model from them. 
Just close your eyes for now and think that you are only given coordinates and some topological information to describe this wall. Forget now that you know what the middle plane of this wall is. You know it because you have seen it. But when importing, there is no visual guidance, only numbers and some rules and algorithms. And very often they are not enough to detect an analytical, analytical model. The second method, however, gives us what we want right away, a middle plane and the thickness with the material. And comparably easier. Whenever you have the chance to decide about representations before export, it is always advised to use so-called extruded types. So now that we have been through this, I promise I will not bother you with such monstrosity. XSVM can import IFC files up to IFC 4 and export them up to IFC 2x3. We support import and export of the elements below, straight or curved linear elements with either constant or tapering cross-section, planar po regions with holes assigned to them, nodal, linear and regional supports. The entities listed below are exported and imported in the IFC file. Walls, IFC wall, or IFC wall standard case, slabs, roofs, ramps, in the form of IFC slab, IFC slab standard case, IFC roof and IFC ramp, footings, like IFC footing, columns, in the form of IFC column, and beams. Levels of imported IFC entities are automatically calculated during the process, so level-related information in the file is ignored. You can handle analytical model as well. In this case, users can export further analytical elements such as loads, load cases, load groups, supports on top of architectural items. However, these kind of entities are ignored by most architectural programs, so this feature is mostly kept for cooperation with other analytical applications. From the various representation types available in IFC standard, XSVM works the best with extruded types, revolve types, swept types, mapped items based on type IFC mapped items, cut elements based on IFC boolean clipping result convert well, worst results are obtained from BRAP type elements like IFC faceted BRAP, IFC faceted BRAP with voids, and IFC manifold solid BRAP. After import, the analytical model can be constructed by pressing this button of the elements tab sheet. Users can choose from these tools to help them with statical frame creation, auto detection of the statical framework, or they can delete objects, designate cross sections of beam like elements by a section plane, specify the axis to define the cross section of a beam like element. Specify the axis and the representative cross-section of the selected beam-like element. Specify the axis of the selected arced beam-like element. Designate framework of a domain by a section plane. Designate framework of an arc surface by an intersecting cylinder. Designate variable cross-section of beam-like elements by n section plates. Let's see how that works on a real example. I import a wall from IFC, but I'm not satisfied with the statical model created. If I now click on the button that I mentioned and select the designate framework of a domain by a section plane tool, I can show the cutting plane by which I want to slice my wall. The result of the slice will be the analytical model of the wall. We offer various ways to filter elements before import. To use this tool, you have to press button called Filtering Objects. Filter criteria can be model history, layers or properties. These criteria can then be combined using an end 
condition, meaning that only a subset of elements will be imported for which all turned on criteria is true. To export data from AccessVM, please select File Menu, Export Item, and any of the IFC 2x extensions. It is advisable to choose IFC 2x3 as this is the most widely spread IFC file type. It is advised to leave the architectural model radio button pressed. Then the user can export walls, slabs, beams, columns and trusses. Other parts of the model like supports, loads and so on will be ignored during the export. It is advised to leave join beams automatically switched on because with this option Axis VM will export structural items as one IFC entity, not as separated linear elements. Since the release of Axis VM 13 R1, users have the possibility to export reinforcement to IFC files. The built-in algorithm of Axis VM helps to export not only the field reinforcement based on user-given intensities, but shaped bars too, like hairpins, hook, and so on. We can close reinforcement on free plate edges, which means that free plate edges are closed by hairpins whose lengths are calculated based on the lap length of bars, which is in turn calculated either by the standards set in the program or the, or the user given value of L0. This option can be turned on or off. Reinforcing concave corners means concave corners can be strengthened by simple bars whose lengths are calculated based on the lap lengths of bars which is in turn calculated either by the standard set in the program or the user given value of L0. This option can be turned on or off as well. Convert short bar to stirrups means to avoid useless duplication of rebars, the algorithm can be given a multiplicator value. Those simple bars whose lengths are greater than the minimal lap lengths multiplied by this value will be converted to a closed stirrup. This option can be turned on or off as well. Closing of rebars at joining plates means along the edges of the plates that do not share the same plane, the algorithm can connect the reinforcements of the individual plates either by hairpins or by hooks. The actual geometry of the shaped bars depends on the width and angle of the joining plates and sometimes the algorithm revises the, user, the user's choice. The sizes of the shaped bars are calculated with respect to the minimal lap length. We can add reinforcement in embedded domains. The method of closing embedding rebars of the embedded domains can be chosen by the user. They can either be handled separately or their rebars can be embedded into each other or if the inner domain is small enough, the outer domain's bar may as well be driven through its body. We can handle slab edges with more than two connecting domains. In such cases, an automatic solution cannot be found, so the user can choose whether to completely skip those edges or close them independently from each other. Finally, there's a way to optimize rebar positions to distribute reinforcement evenly if reinforcement domains overlap. There is a handy little feature that we call workflow. This function lists new modified and deleted objects when re-importing IFC files. Each change can be approved or ignored. Selecting a change in the tree shows the position of the selected element, element within the current model. In as much as the show the selected element checkbox is checked, of course. This feature works only for IFC files previously exported from Access VM, edited in software supporting this feature and imported again to Access VM. Well, this all there is to IFC for now, but we will get back to it later in the second part. Now let's talk about SAF. SAF is an initiative from the Nemecek group to improve the collaboration between structural engineers by developing an open exchange format for exchanging data between structural analysis software based on the Excel format. It has been developed since 2018 and, it is, and its goal is to give a robust means of transferring structural data between applications. It is an open Excel-based file format, hence human readable, 
editable and allows for sophisticated queries. It is supported by a bunch of software vendors, for example, Axis VM. We support both import and export of the elements below. Straight or curved linear elements with either constant or tapering cross section, planar regions with holes assigned to them, nodal, linear, and regional supports, load combinations, load groups, load cases, and individual loads, hinges, and rigid members. The number of supported items is increasing as the SAF standard itself evolves. The first SAF version was 105, and at the moment of this webinar, the most updated version is 2.1.0. Axis VM supports versions between 1.0.5 and 2.0.0, and support of 2.1.0 is on the way. With this protocol, it is possible to do a workflow-based data exchange. It means that once a model is exported as SAF, modified in another application, it can be read back taking the changes into account. New, modified, and deleted items are automatically handled. This process can be started in both Axis VM and other software supporting Axis VM protocol. During this comparison-based import, the user can compare geometry and or material-related changes, validate or ignore changes, but more about it a bit later. Now let us surf to Axis VM's closed BIM tools, namely the Revit and Tecla interfaces. Support of a direct link between Revit and Axis VM started in 2015 because it was necessary to handle certain special features of Revit that OpenBIM was just not able to solve efficiently. The base of this is the Revit API, an application programming interface. This API allows for developers to create applications that utilizes the capabilities of Revit. The add-in can be installed independently of Axis VM with a standalone installer and takes no more than one minute. After that, Revit recognizes it and users are ready to use it. There are two basic scenarios. First, Revit and Axis VM exist on the same machine, so data exchange can happen either via an intermediate file or seamlessly with our COM interface. The second case is when Revit and Axis VM are on different machines. In this case, data transfer happens through immediate files. This solution can be more flexible and follow the needs of both software. On the other hand, it has to be updated whenever either application changes. Users have several properties to, adju to adjust either on Revit or on Axis VM side. These properties influence the result of the data transfer. We can, for example, change if we wish to export the architectural model given in Revit and try to detect an analytical model in Axis VM at import, or we wish to use the analytical model of Revit. The types of elements to be written to the exported file is also something users can decide about. At Axis VM, we can, for example, decide if we want to overwrite the formerly existing model with the data of the file to be imported, or we want to add them to the model. The add-in supports walls, slabs, beams, columns, foundations, and certain load types too. We can handle some types of tapering and eccentric slabs. An automated cross-section recognition is built in, which is a multi-step procedure with several fallback cases to be as effective as possible. First, we try to query the Revit database itself to know what cross-section we face with. If it fails, we try to investigate the family type's data file. If we are still not successful, we ask the user. There's an inbuilt learning procedure for cross-section mapping, which stores the user's preferences, so the next time we meet this cross-section, we shall not bother him or her with this question. Of course, the result of the automated cross-section recognition process can always be overridden. This kind of mapping mechanism is provided for materials, too. Now a few words about Tecla interface. There is a firm line in Tecla support drawn in 2019. For former Tecla versions, we have only a one-directional support, which is the Tecla Axis VM direction. This solution is deprecated now and is strongly recommended to use the later and most up-to-date version. 
It supports Teclo version higher or equal to 2019 and can handle bidirectional data transfer pretty much like Revit interface. For this, there is also an independent installer which can be downloaded from Teclo Warehouse. It uses intermediate files to export data to access VM or import from it. This solution is heavily based on Tecto API and can handle typical Tecto-like features or problems, and strongly dependent on Tecla or Access VM changes. Walls, slabs, supports, beams and columns are supported. We support certain load types too, but only from Tecla to Access VM. We can handle some types of tapering or eccentric slabs. Mapping of Tecla and Access VM materials exists with overriding possibility and learning process similar to what we have seen at Revit. Workflow is also supported here. Now, having mentioned workflow so much, it is time to talk about it in details. The term refers to the process when a user creates a model either in Access VM or anywhere else, then exports it, reads it to another software, makes some changes, then sends it back to the original application. In this round trip, users would like to get notified of any changes, be it geometrical or material. Access VM supports this feature for IFC, SAF, Revit, and Tecla 2. However, there are some limitations. At the moment, only beams, columns, walls, and slabs are supported. Let's see how it is actually implemented. When a new beam is created in Access VM, it is given a unique ID, which it will always have in its lifetime. No matter how the beam is changed, the ID stays the same. At export time, this ID is exported with the element 2. When an element is imported to any other software, this ID is kept and stored. If it is sent back to Access VM and we see that it has an ID, we try to search for it in our inner database. If we cannot find it, it means that this is a new element and has to import it as is. Otherwise, we compare its geometry and or material, and if there is any difference, the user is given the chance to either accept the new values or ignore them. Thus, location, cross-section, and material changes can be handled. The same process is repeated for all linear and planar elements, too. In theory, it is as easy as that. However, for example, in case of Revit, additional magic had to be done because it does not allow modifications for an existing building element. In this case, the old element has to be deleted and the new one created. It would mean that our unique ID would be lost and could never keep track of our element's lifecycle again. The solution was to inject a shared parameter to the file, which is added to all building elements and it can be persisted between deletions and creations. The caveat of this method is, if the Revit project file cannot be modified and we cannot inject this parameter, the workflow cannot work. For SAF files, the aforementioned workflow could be extended for support items too. Let's start with an IFC import example. I designed this tiny building in Archicad. I will go in File menu, Save as, and select the entire project to export and Scale Engineer Translator, because this gives the best results with Access VM. After the file is saved, I will go to Access VM, File menu, Import, and select the file I have just created. Soon a dialog pops up. It is sometimes advised to move the structure close to the origin to avoid uselessly large coordinates, but this time I will just leave everything as they are. After the import is done, I can press this button to convert IFC elements to analytical model. I will select all and use the cross-section and material data originally assigned to them in the IFC file. Please note that you could override both of them if you wish so. Finally, the analytical model is created with no user interaction. Now let us undo this import and see how to apply filters to the file before importing it. At the import dialog, you have to press button Filtering Objects. 
you will soon see a bunch of options to filter upon. You could filter based on layers, history, or properties. I will just choose to ignore columns this time. You can see that there are no columns imported, which is just what we wanted. And after the previously demonstrated conversion, our statical model is ready to go. Let's have an example on exporting IFC from XSVM. I created a small model with reinforcement in it. In File menu, Export, I can select IFC to X3. Then make sure to check Export Reinforcement to and make adjustments on the upcoming dialog. Now I will leave everything as it is and save the file. We can now have a look at it in any IFC viewers. Here it is, and if I hide, for example, this wall and this beam, the reinforcement inside them becomes visible. Please find the extra rebars I added there, for example, to the corners of openings, and how the software turned two short bars into stirrups to save some reinforcement. Having a look at the beam reinforcement, we can catch the stirrups and log it longitudinal bars as they should be. Our next example is SAF export and workflow on a model created in XSVM. I will click SAF options on the export dialog to make sure the resulting file is of version 105 because this is the most popular SAF type out there. Now I will open it in ARCHICAD without any adjustments. After it opens up, I will, for example, modify the cross-section of a random column and then save it. Now let's go over to XSVM, where I can import it again and see what happens. A dialog appears because we have a model open and XSVM would like to know how to handle the existing and arriving data. I will tell it to compare them and notify me if any changes are detected. It took a while, but at the end I can see that there is one modified item, which is the column we actually have changed. The next example will be data transfer between Revit and XSVM. I have this building here in Revit. To export it to XSVM, one has to click Add-ins on the upper ribbon of Revit, then select XSVM interface under External Tools. I will demonstrate this using an intermediate file, but the method is exactly the same with Combase Export 2. If I wanted to export only the selected items, I would have to check Export Selected Only. To make this file capable of workflow, this checkbox has to be checked in, which it is by default. Here I can choose to accept Revit's analytical model or ask AxisVM to create its own at import time. After pressing OK, we are prompted a dialog to handle cross-sections. 
In this example, automatic cross-section recognition exactly matches my needs, so I will use its results, but remember, you can always override them here. If there are any materials we could not map to access field materials, we can map it manually on the next dialog. Finally, our file is saved. In Access VM's File menu, Import, we can select the relevant extension filter and then import the file. We will see a picture of the building, some information about the exporting Revit application and the content of the file. And here we have the opportunity to fine-tune our import, like whether or not to move the building closer to the origin, which is sometimes needed in case of Revit import, whether or not to take eccentricity in account, whether to attempt to create elements from BREP representations as well, and so on. Here you can select the material to use in case an element misses material information. And finally our building is imported. Finally, let's see how to send the building from Axis VM to Revit. Let's select Export and the Export to Revit file extension. After our file is saved, we can import it in Revit. This time only the Import tab is enabled, because we don't have any projects open. We can see the preview of the building to be imported. First, we have to map Axis VM materials to Revit materials. And that's all. Our building is ready to go in Revit.